you see the rubber bands behind that yes, plate okay, bucket? Yes, back here. Yeah. Hey, Katie, if you need to turn yourself up, if you think. Okay. You're number one over there, and your volume just is, you know, just turn it up a little bit. Okay. Unless it, unless it whistles. <laughs> Okay, all right. All right. Welcome. We are doing our second drive in worship. I hope everyone is well and healthy. It's good to see you all. Um, I'm going to be passing out the order of worship and I'm going to be uh, rubber banding a palm to your mirror if you want a, a palm rubber band. If not, you can just tell me no, and that's fine. Um, I have my gloves on, I'm all ready. Um, but hopefully, can you blink your lights if you can hear me, please? We got it? Okay, good. Wonderful. Good, wonderful. Well, it's good to see you, and uh, let's get started on Palm Sunday worship.
lips of children make sweet hosannas fingers. And just so you know, in the Mark reading, in the middle, we are going to sing the doxology together. You can just hum it a little bit in the car if you feel self-conscious about it, right? You don't have to um, make a big thing about it. But that's my hope, right, is that we can do all of that. So, see one more person coming, just a moment. So we're going to try to, you know, work on all of these kinds of pieces and get it done, all right? So here's the first reading. It's Psalm 116. Let us hear the word of the Lord and be ready to respond. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. And now you can turn on your headlights if you're in your car. <laughs> I think they have to turn on their cars. Yeah, you have to turn on your cars. <laughs> it's a hard thing. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. You could wave your, song, your, your uh, palm on this one too, right? 
It was easier last week when everyone's cars were on for the rain. This is hilarious. Oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of his house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, pray, praise the Lord. And I invite you to turn off your cars if you want to. We will not need them for the rest of the worship. <laughs> Let us take a moment and silently pray, and I will get an order of worship to our one last car, car while we do that. But this is your silent confession. Confession is where you offer all that you are to God, the good and the bad, and you ask for forgiveness of your sins, and you ask him to strengthen those things that are good. Let us confess ourselves to God. Amen. So this is the part where you're going to reach yourself or reach to the car. As I hold up my fingers, you're going to read out loud what the piece is. And after the part where they say, then Jesus and his followers sang the hymn, we are going to sing the doxology. All right, here we go. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave, gave it, it to them, them and, and said, said, take, take this, this is, is my, my body. body. <clears throat> then, then he, he took, took a cup, and, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, them and all of them, them drank from it. From it. He said, said to them, this, this is my blood of the covenant, covenant which is poured out for many. many. Truly I tell I you, I will never drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. shepherd and the sheep will be scattered but after I am raised up I will go before you to Galilee Peter, Peter said, said to him, him even though, though all become, become deserters I will not, not. Jesus, Jesus said to him truly I tell you this day this very night before the cock crows twice you will deny me three times But he, but he said, said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. 
And he said said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you will not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went went away away and and prayed, prayed, saying the same same words. And And once once more he came and found found them sleeping, sleeping, for their their eyes were were very heavy. heavy. And they they did did not not know know what what to to say to him. He came a third time third time and and said to them, them, Are you you still still sleeping sleeping and taking taking your rest? Enough. Enough. The hour hour has come. The The Son of Man Man is betrayed betrayed into the hands hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Oh, 
It's good to be together in this way, isn't it? Even if we're not physically in the same room at the same time, I think it is wonderful to be able to gather in any way that is safe. And I'm really glad that everyone is here today. This is a funny Palm Sunday, and it's a funny Palm Sunday in Mark too. Mark is never one to waste words, right? He is the briefest and quickest part of the gospel. In fact, if you're learning about the Bible, many people recommend Mark because it's a very brief scripture. So in Mark, there is no Palm Sunday. There is no Hosanna moment. They, the, it's interesting, Mark thinks that the Last Supper and the prayer at Gethsemane are more important than Palm Sunday. And the reason why this is, I think, is because that Palm Sunday was a premature victory party. It happened before anything changed. It happened before Jesus had won over death. It was in anticipation of that moment when everyone was together. And it was a victory parade in the old classic style of conquerors where you would come through and you'd lay down your cloaks and you'd lay down your palm, the palms and the leaves to soften their way from the long journey. But we all know that Jesus did not have a military victory. That is not the kind of fight that Jesus was having. And I find that really heartening in today because right now the kind of victory we're looking for is not a military one in the midst of a pandemic. No one can fight and beat a pandemic in that way, right? It's not possible. You can't kill the, pan the pandemic the way you can kill enemies. The only way to, to kind of beat or have victory over a pandemic, and even then those words are not correct, the only way to win against a pandemic is for that moment of ultimate healing when we can all be reconciled and come together in person once again. Now, does that sound like Easter or what? Does that sound like what is we are looking forward to in the Easter time? And Jesus is so alone before he dies. He's so alone, right? He's trying to tell the disciple what's going to happen. And you know what? They take it personally. They say, that can't happen to me. I can't get sick. Oh, I mean, I can't betray Jesus, right? That can't happen to me. This is not true for me. I would never do that. I am a healthy soul. I'm a follower of Jesus. I will be safe. And Jesus says, even Peter will betray him three times before the cock crows on the faded morning. And they can't even hear what's going to happen because it's too horrible for them to take in. I mean, can we blame them? If something's that bad, can you believe it? If someone had told me last year when the palms were wilting and dying that that would be the least of my worries this year, I don't think I would have believed them. Last year, my biggest worry was the palms were dying because they all had mold on them. It's laughable today, right? It's so palms dying. How's that different from people getting sick and people being hurt, right? It is such a horrible truth that the, that the disciples can't take it. So Jesus goes to the garden, and even though he knows he's so alone, he keeps the disciples, you know, social distancing close to them, him, right? It's funny. He takes all the disciples to the garden, and then he leaves most of them outside the garden, then the three, you know, favored disciples, who I'm going to lose their names because I'm very nervous right now, right? The three favored dis disciples, he takes in further, right? And I know one of them's Peter. He takes them further, closer into the garden, and then he leaves them outside too. Six, at least six feet apart between Jesus and the disciples, right? Why did he bring them if they were going to be outside the garden? I think because there's comfort here. Why are we here when we all have to sit in our cars? Because there's comfort in praying together even when we're apart, right? And we know people are going to be praying on the video too, right? Even though we're far apart, we're going to be together. And Jesus values that togetherness. Even as all the disciples cannot understand what's going to happen or what the suffer is going to be like. 
even as we who are not sick cannot understand what's going to happen, who's going to get sick, and what the suffering is going to be like, we can pray together for one another. That's exactly what happens in the garden. Jesus takes the disciples and he says, pray. And the disciples find it very hard, right? They fall asleep not once, not twice, but three times. And when I think about our failures to try to put into practice the social distancing, right? Trying to be safe and yet trying to keep people apart and how hard it is. I think we can understand how difficult it is, right? We can understand that it is not easy to be far apart from one another. And that, I don't know about you, but my sleep is disturbed when I am not seeing people regularly. Either I'm sleeping too much or I'm sleeping too little, right? It's hard to get up in the morning or it's hard to go to bed at night. And I think the disciples feel that too, right? Their sleep, their very sleep is disturbed. Their natural body rhythms are not working correctly because something big is happening and it's a crisis. And so here we are in the middle of Palm Sunday and what better time to cry out Hosanna, which we say like a victory, but Hosanna means Lord save us. Come, save us. When we're saying Hosanna, we're asking God to come and sit by us and walk through us in our hard journey. We are remembering that there is no, no that we have seen, you know, one part of the victory party, but the next party is going to be even better. There's going to be reconciling, there's going to be healing, and there's going to be hope. And I know that we're going to enter, we are still going to be in this time of Holy Saturday. You know what happens on Holy Saturday? nothing and waiting and we are going to be stuck in the nothing and waiting part but when we gather again in person the reconciliation and the healing is going to be so joyful joyful we are going to get what easter means we are going to feel easter it is going to be the best easter ever and we get to do it twice right we'll do it next week according to the calendar holiday and then we'll do it again when we're able to gather physically in person we're going to celebrate Easter again because technically, according to our faith, every Sunday is an Easter. That's why we come together to practice that we're reconciled, we're together, and we're healed, and we're one. Every Sunday should be a celebration of Easter. So I know when we physically come together, we are going to be good at celebrating that, that Easter. In fact, I hear there's going to be cake. It's going to be very exciting. But right now, in the Holy Saturday, we can wait outside the garden with Jesus, and we can pray. And that is just as important as all the rest of it. And so we're going to pray together. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us our debts, debts as we forgive, forgive our debtors. debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For, For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power and, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
be with you all. Hosanna! Hosanna. Hosanna. I got a lot of good shaking out there. <laughs> Peace with you. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus, I fain would take my stand. The 